Just an hour and a half north of Albuquerque on New Mexico Highway 30 are the Puye Cliff Dwellings. Carved out of a cliff formed by the Jemez Caldera volcanic eruption more than a million years ago, these ancient dwellings are part of a larger network of ruins you will find here on the Pajarito Plateau. As the ancestral home of the Santa Clara Pueblo, the descendants of the dwellings hold a very strong spiritual connection to the site and offer tours to share their history with you. So this whole area is actually all known as the Pajarito Plateau, mm -hmm. which is where the volcano came and formed this whole area. And people lived in these little crevices throughout the whole mesa. Yes, the whole mesa goes three miles all the way around and there's caves around the entire mesa. On this south face alone, there's 750 caves. So there's thousands of caves here. Thousands of caves <laughs> in this one piece of rock. In this one big piece of rock. It's like a major city. Like, yes, you know? definitely. It's like your official first apartment complexes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your caves were your winter home just mm -hmm. because this volcanic rock absorbs the heat in the daytime as you can feel how warm it is right here. Yeah. And then you lived up on the mesa top in the summertime because you mm -hmm. have the breeze. So you just had a summer home and a winter home. Oh. So, so that's been happening for yeah. a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty wealthy to have two houses, a summer yeah. home and a winter home. Yeah. What they would have used to actually get into the caves were hand and foot holes. So it was basically like rock climbing. Just rock climbing yes. to get home <laughs> so every day. Climbing <laughs> up, getting onto the roof, and then going down. Oh. And their enemies here were the Navajos, Apaches, Comanches, and the Utes. Mm. So if any of those specific nomadic groups ever came and tried invading the people here, mm -hmm. they would have had to use those hand and foot holes to actually get to the people. Okay. The only way that they could use those is they had to know the pattern. There was a strategy on using them. So they had to know which hand went up first and which mm -hmm. leg would go up first. If they didn't know the strategy, they were stuck on the side of the cliff. It's like a password. Mm -hmm. We continue along the cliff trail and take note of the petroglyphs above. Those aren't the only remaining traces of art you will find here though. And this is a little pottery shards. At one point, the people were basket makers. Okay. The women also entwined their own little different design to be able to identify their pottery pieces. So if they ever got misplaced, they would have known which pot was theirs just because of the designs that they did draw on them. And were these uh, like hunter-gatherer people? It was more agriculture, agriculture is what yeah. they grew. Mm -hmm. what, we, what we call the three sisters mm -hmm. are the corn, bean, and squash. Okay. So they had five fields. Their biggest field would have been on this south face. Oh, okay. And they would have had other fields located on this west, east, and north side. They did do a little bit of hunting, small game, squirrels, rabbits, birds. And what does Puye stand for? Puye means in our language, which is Tewa, Tewa. means where the rabbits gather or where the rabbits meet. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, look at that. So if you step up, you can stick your head inside. Wow, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so you can see it's about 10 to 15 degrees cooler in the back. And yeah. then you can see the, the black fire smoke up on top. And then there's a ventilation to your left. And then there's a ventilation up on the top there. So you can kind of feel the circular ventilation actually airing out the structures. Mm -hmm. It's like a completely different climate inside. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so this cave is a really good example on how big the structures would have actually been. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the caves aren't that tall. Females are between the height of about three to four feet tall. Wow. And males are between four to five feet tall. So okay. they weren't the tallest people here. Mm -hmm. Their average lifespan was between 35 to 40. The number one cause of death here was their teeth. Mm. They would use the grinding stones to actually grind down some of the corn, foods, anything that they needed a nice fine powder fill. Mm -hmm. Once you eat it, you're going to get particles of the rock into your food. So when you eat it, it's going to help chip down your teeth. Mm -hmm. Once your teeth are gone, it's going to lead to starvation or infection hits your bloodstream, that's a very painful death. Mm -hmm. So their teeth were the number one cause of death. Yeah. So they didn't grow too tall or live too long. So you had a mm -hmm. short, quick lifespan back then. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt, life was difficult in those times, and drought ultimately drove the Puebloans from this mesa down to current day Santa Clara Pueblo. But it's amazing to see the traces of the life that once existed here. Keep an eye out for pottery shards as you walk the trails, but be sure to leave any you find on site. Don't forget to check out the Visitor Center, formerly a Harvey house, and the only one built on Pueblo land. Hiking the dwellings may work up an appetite. Stop at El Paragua in Española for Mexican food that has been delighting locals for more than 50 years.